Have you been curious about resin and alcohol ink Petries? Have you wondered how to spice them up? Stay tuned and watch things develop. Hi everyone, it's Miriam with a Y from Miriam's Nature. If you haven't already seen it, there is a bit of a craze with making what are called resin Petries. And I think they're called that because round ones look like Petri dishes. They're very pretty and involve letting alcohol ink sink into resin so that you get a fun 3D pattern to develop that's very often best seen from the back. But I'm going to be more deliberate with it. Because, you know, I'm not happy if I don't a, put my own spin on something, and B, encourage you to do the same. Now, in a previous video, I showed you how to use dollar store cookie cutters as fun molds for resin. And at the end, I showed you this other fluid ink piece that I'd made using the star cookie cutter as a mold. But I never showed you how I did this. Today, we're going to check out how to make pieces like this, hopefully with a little something extra. And we're going to do one in a ready-made, really inexpensive mold that I got on eBay, so that if you're interested, you don't have to spend a lot. I'm going to start out by doing things a little differently than usual. First, I'm going to demold test pieces that I made, and you can see how that goes. For these, I used both Ranger and Jacquard Pinata inks for my colors, but my white is always Pinata. It's hands down better for this process. It sinks through the resin in a smoother, prettier way. I also prefer the more precise control I get with the Pinata dropper which is a little ironic because it has a bigger tip, but a drop doesn't fall until I'm ready, which I can't say about the Ranger bottles. Something to keep in mind. I ran my test in a silicone baking dish that I cut up into smaller pieces. What I usually do when I make resin pieces, larger pieces, is I always have one of these nearby so that if I have resin left over, it doesn't go to waste and I can do something cool in, in one of these little pieces. And then usually I can end up with sort of pretty little things when I'm done. I wanted to test out different patterns and uh, colors and see what works and what doesn't with the resin. So I've not seen these yet. I'm hoping a couple worked out because <laughs> if they're all epic fails, we'll end up listening to crickets and staring at the ceiling together. <laughs> so please cross your fingers and let's see what we've got. I'm wearing gloves because the resin isn't rock hard yet, so I don't want to introduce fingerprints. That's the only reason. Ooh, it's coming out very easily, this one. Okay, so here I added mica to resin and I dropped a little bit right down the middle. Uh, I'll think about this one. Okay, I did the same thing here. So I don't know if I'm loving the mica necessarily. I tried the mica because when I drop gold mixative alcohol ink, it sort of sits on the surface and sometimes obliterates all the color on the surface. So I thought maybe mica would be more interesting. But I do love that sort of 3D world you get. It's kind of always so fascinating to me. I want to save this one for later because I have hopes for that one. Now on this one, I added glitter to Oh, that is a little epic failure, somewhat, because I added too much glitter so you can't see anything but the glitter on the back. But, I mean, it's still pretty. I added mica in the middle and then swirled it. Okay, I've learned here not to use so much glitter. That's a, 
informative. I used less glitter in this one, but still more than I should have because it's still obliterating a lot. Okay, let's try this pink one. Oh, I like this one. Okay, so this one, once I put the pink colors, these were rangers, and then the white, I swirled it. So now I have a bit of a swirl going on inside. I think that's pretty cool. What I want to figure out is how to eliminate having so many of these white dots. This is the white alcohol ink sinking. So sometimes it can be fun, but sometimes it can be too much. This was a pinata color. Ooh, way too much white. See, this is what happens. And there's too much white. So I like the front on this one, but the reverse, too much. I like the sides too, but no. Now this one is really fascinating. This is, believe it or not, this color is Ranger's Purple Twilight. <laughs> it, when you first pour it in, it's purple. And then it turns into this really pretty pale aqua. And, oh, now this one's awesome. I love this. Ah. And this one, it's because I used very little ink and very little white. I also used the pearl mixative. That's what gave this really cool sort of Queen Anne's lacy middle here. Oh, okay. Too much white. Pretty here. These were ranger colors. This was caramel and ginger um, and oregano. But too much white. So here, what I did was less white. So the white didn't sink as much because there wasn't that much of it. So you definitely see the texture inside better, but it's a little bland in color. And this is Pinata's purple. Uh, purple Passion, I think it's called. And again, I had tried the Mica Center. It's a little dark. Okay. I'm definitely learning a lot by trying these things to see what works and what doesn't. Now on this one, interesting. Here, what I tried to do was run a circle of mica around the periphery and a little bit in the middle. So that's interesting. Okay. And then these are all pinata. And I put them in rainbow order. Not bad. Okay, so this amount of white. I know how much white to add. So this one told me a lot. This is my favorite. So these are the backs now. These two, no good. This one, pretty, but doesn't have the Petri look because there was too much glitter. Less glitter, but still not petri enough. This one's perfect. I mean, I love that one. I love the texture in this one. The 3D-ness of the texture that it that gets caused is cool. I like that a lot. I also like the spirally. That's cool. I like that a lot. And this one has potential, too. 
I think that's way pretty also. Now what's nice about this mold is because the mold is shiny on the inside, then your pieces pop out shiny. So I don't have to give another coat to the back. It's already ready to go. All right, now let's see what we can make. As usual, I'll be using my resin of choice, which is clear gas 7050. It's my favorite resin to use for most things. And in this particular case, it accepts the inks beautifully and cures flawlessly every time. So it is definitely my go-to resin. Okay, so I've mixed up a batch of resin. I'm going to pour this into our mold. And what's really important when you're pouring into something like this is to make sure that you sort of run a stick or something along the corners. Bubbles have a real tendency to want to sit there. And if they sit there and stay there, when you pop out your piece, that bubble will have cured into a really sharp little edge. And those are not fun. Make sure that bubbles that might want to hug that area sort of move out into the center where they can either pop on their own or I can pop them with a torch. For this piece, I'm envisioning a bit of a beachy scene, sort of maybe the ocean and some sand. And I want to do that in a Petri-ish style. So I need to think in darker colors than I would want my finished piece to be because the white is going to lighten everything I put down. So for my beach, which I'll start down here, I'm going to use caramel. That's a ranger color. I'm just going to drop a whole bunch of it. And then this is teak wood, which is really dark. And then now I'll add some white. So I'm going to let my beach sort of develop. And then for my ocean, toward the beach, I want the water to be a little greener. So I'm going to start out with bottle. I will lighten it up with a little bit of cloudy blue. Then in the back corner, definitely indigo. It's the darkest of the blues. Down with sailboat blue. This is Pinata's Baja blue. And then finally some turquoise. Again, it's a ranger color. Now I'm going to do some pearl in some areas. So it doesn't look like much now, but I'm going to let things develop and see where I need to add some more color. Let these move. Now I'm going to come in, fill in some of the empty spaces. I'm using pool. I want my ocean to be all different shades of blue and aqua. Now let's hit this with some white. Now I need to lighten up my beach. I'm going to use latte. I love the water. Oh my gosh. So pretty. I want to make sure not to overdo it with the white because we saw how that can sometimes lead to less than pretty results. Now some white on top of that. Given how much the white is sinking, 
I'm going to risk adding more of it to be able to spiral it into the beach to lighten it. As you can see that I did a bit in the corner and hopefully create a separation between the ocean and the sand. We'll see how that goes. Still really soft because it sank really quickly. And now a little swirling to lighten the beach some more. The white that I dropped in earlier is underneath and gets brought up when I swirl. And now this little area needs some color. It's totally clear right now. So I'm going to add some more blue. And then a little white, and then we're done. I came to check on this about 20 minutes later, and I know that this is completely level. I tested this so many times. But it seems like the water is coming onto the beach. It's funny, the water itself hasn't changed much, but it seems to be collapsing the beach. Unless the beach is sinking under the water, I don't know what's going on. It's fascinating. And there is this little thing of water that's coming down here. Very pretty, very bizarre. <laughs> so I have no idea. So hopefully, in a few hours, there'll still be a beach because <laughs> the water may completely take over. I have no idea. But I just thought I would kind of pop in and show you this development so that if the beach is gone, you won't be too shocked. <laughs> okay, see you later. <laughs> a couple of hours have passed and the resin has definitely thickened up quite a bit. Um, I'll show you what I mean. If I run my skewer through it now, it's kind of sticky and makes strings. I'm not worried about it at all because it'll always repair itself at this stage, so I can make quite the mess. But anyway, what I thought of, given that it's at this point, was what if I sort of tried drawing with alcohol ink where I want the white and it's kind of working so I thought I would show you what I'm doing so this is just a little scrap of freezer paper and I'm just dropping some white alcohol ink right there and I'm literally just dotting it on and it's blending in it's not staying lily white it's sort of taking on the color beneath it but you know what I'm okay with that because this is an abstract so I'm not looking for perfection I just want it to be pretty and I think this is really pretty so this is letting me get some of the white that I had wanted to give that kind of crashing wave look to the front the color is still sinking in a little bit. It's amazing to me. Even at this stage, the alcohol ink still sinks. I mean, it's the consistency of peanut butter right now. And the alcohol ink can still make its way down. And now I'm poking at the lines that I made to sort of make them less uniform looking and more jagged, hopefully foamy also like water that when it hits the beach so I'm just literally pulling up on the resin and at this stage even if I put my finger in it and pulled it out it would level itself back out and heal the wound that was there so I'm not too concerned about being gentle I'm going to continue doing this for a little bit 
check to make sure there aren't any little dust particles that might have fallen in here while I was working, and then put this piece to bed, and we'll check it out tomorrow. It's been about a day, so this is definitely cured, and it's time to see what we got. Okay, I love the front and really focused on that because I think I'm going to end up using this as a coaster, so you really won't see the back if I put things on the back to make it a coaster. Um, but I am kind of curious to see how the white dots fared when I take this out of the mold. Now this mold releases very easily. That's what's extra nice about these super soft silicone dealies. It's like putting pulling off a glove. It's kind of cool. I don't mind the white dots. The texture here in the water is really interesting. I mean, I could live with less white dots so that I'd see more of the texture, but it's still really cool. Look at that. I even like the texture of the dots themselves. Oh, this makes me want to do other things. It's giving me other ideas. By the way, I'm hoping that you've subscribed if you're new so that you can get more ideas and projects from this channel. Okay, I love the finish from this mold. I don't have to do anything to it. The finish on the back on this one is really rather shiny. Um, and that's kind of luck of the draw with the mold. Sometimes the inside of the mold itself when you order these is really shiny like this one happens to be but sometimes it has more of a bit of a matte finish and when that's the case like on this one you get more of like a satin finish it's still really nice and smooth and all that it's just less shiny than this one but still really really nice and on the other side because when you first pull anything out of a mold, unless you filled the mold all the way to the tippy top, which I don't tend to do, the edges will creep up the side, you know, capillary action. And so usually what I end up doing is putting a top coat, which just uses a little bit of resin and gives you a really perfect finish. So that's what I'll do, like I did for this one. And I'm really super duper pleased with this. I'd love to know what you guys think. And I'd love to know if you'd like to see other test reveals and show and tell type videos along with tutorials. Leave a thumbs up and share this as much as you can to let me know to continue making these videos. Okay, I have finally, finally, <laughs> made a Facebook page for this channel after almost a year. Being social media challenged, I resisted it. But in a week or two, I'm even going to add a Facebook group for the channel. Yes, a group. Because I really want to hear what you guys all make and uh, have questions about and, and, and let you guys interact with each other, all that good stuff. Now, about the page, it's brand new as of yesterday. So it has only a handful of followers. So I'd love it if you'd go like the page, turn on notifications. Here's the name. Remember the why. <laughs> I'll also put a link in the video description box. So why should you like this Facebook page? I will share exclusive tips and tricks there. You'll see work in progress pictures, mini videos, hear about good deals and new products that I find, and there'll be periodic art and supplies giveaways and some surprise giveaways too. <laughs> so as soon as you finish watching this, visit the Facebook page to get started. Let's see how fast we can grow this thing. Thank you all for being here and for being my art family. See you back here and on Facebook. <laughs> Hugs to you all. Bye now. Okay, I do Mark. Get set. Go now. <laughs> You're done watching. Go to Facebook.
Thanks in advance. Bye now.